Yeah. Um, I think what you just said though is being able to highlight here's what I can do for you, or mm -hmm. here's what we can do for you, here's what the organization can do for you. Yeah. We'll definitely be able to get, you know, students to really start to reframe their idea of, you know, their college experience and mm -hmm. getting involved. And and like I said, I think the biggest thing is for us is to start to change that cycle mm -hmm. is to begin at orientation right mm -hmm. so as soon as they get in there as soon as they come to campus their first time visiting campus they're in a presentation that talks about student government says hey here's what we can do for you so everybody knows there's no way around it you know and orientation is mandatory so there's yeah. no way they cannot you know get that information yeah um, and if you don't go to orientation you have to take it online right yeah and so we can definitely have like a piece online you know like a PowerPoint online that we could upload that they'd have to review or something like that mm -hmm. um, but definitely so students will know that here's SGA here's what we do and here's why you should join because this is gonna benefit you and students don't know that like they can you know for the most part they don't know that we're the ones who make the change on campus right mm -hmm. I mean they might think oh you know the president or the administration are the ones who are gonna make the changes on campus yeah absolutely not I mean if if our voice is big enough I mean I'll tell you what I can tell tell you guys that you know every single day I have opinions and I can go talk to an administrator and say hey this ain't gonna work with students but guess what they're gonna say well you know, we're not really getting that many students who are not who are against it. So we're just going to go and go with it. Why? Because you know it might be benefiting benefiting uh, our pocketbook or whatever it may be. You know, our, it's our it's not a very big expense for the university, something mm -hmm. like that. Um, same thing with like the uh, food on campus, right? I mean, I think it's fair safe to say that, or fair to say that, if you go up to any student on campus and say, "Hey, do you enjoy your experience?" You know, with food on campus. Majority of the time, you're going to get something that's either fair or below that, right? Yeah. So, I mean, and the thing is, though, is that students aren't vocal about that, right? They just take it as it is and they say, you know what, I'm going to go off campus right here down the street and yeah. get, pick up some fast food, when in reality, they should be going to administrators or going to the patio cafe and saying, hey, can I speak to my manager mm -hmm. or the, you know, the supervisor over here and tell them how terrible it is. Um, and so only then will they'd be able to say, okay, yeah, guess what, you know, this month we had, you know, 20 complaints from students saying how bad it is, right? Mm -hmm. Those 20 complaints, even though that's just a very, very small portion uh, or percentage of our population of students on campus, 20 students, guess what, that's 20 more than what we have, they have been getting, right? Mm -hmm. All they're getting is a lot of hearsay. Well, if they're getting hearsay, guess what, you know, it's going down the drain, right? Mm -hmm. Like any of us, if you hear hearsay, I mean, you're just like, well, if I'm not gonna hear from the source itself, then I don't even gonna take it into account. Right. Um, so yeah, definitely tell them what we can do because I mean, change starts with students, and once students realize that and really start to get vocal about it, I mean that's the only way. It's I mean the student experience will get better. So. Yeah. I think also like a lot of people just expect the SGA to do stuff for them. Um, I was talking to some people about the smoking policy, and a lot of students didn't even know that there is a potential change in process, and they were like, well, the SGA hasn't told us anything, so they aren't looking out. They're just waiting for. Mm -hmm. action already right and, and you know that's the other thing is too and, and that's another reason why uh, these the r4 positions cumber a lot of stress is because of that fact right so it's students like oh well sga is going to let us know or sga is going to do the right thing or whatever it may be and so you know we have to take that and and really you know focus on what students are saying and 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 that's our big thing too is is with within student government even our meetings you guys know i mean that if you've come to a meeting that, you know, we have multiple committees within the university um, and that we have students that sit on those and talk about those issues. Um, with the smoking policy, it's, it's a very big issue and it's a very, I mean, it's very half and half right now. Mm. And I can tell you what, being in, you know, student government, being on the, sitting on a committee that makes the final decision for that, for me, as the only student on that committee, you know, they're really, you know, I'm, if I'm split half and half, you know, it's really going to be very difficult. Yeah. But, you know, that that's assuming that at that committee, it sways, you know, it doesn't sway one way or the other. Because mm. if that committee is also half and half, then it's going to be very difficult. But, for example, if, you know, half, more than half of, you know, everybody on that committee says, oh, yeah, we want to smoke free campus. Well, it doesn't really matter what I'm going to say, even though I represent, you know, over 8,000 students on campus, mm -hmm. they're just gonna be like, well, you know, it doesn't matter because the other people in this room, you know, will just basically override me. Um, Does that get frustrating? 
Oh yeah, of course. Yeah. Of course. I mean, it, 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 it's just, I mean, people tell you all the time in this position, they say, you represent the student body and, or, you know, the student population of 8,000 something students. And, you know, I would absolutely love to call, you know, call them hypocrites sometimes, but, you know, sometimes they're like, I talk to them about issues and, well, students are saying this, I'm like, oh, okay, well, we'll think about it, you know, and it's like, well, no, it's like, <laughs> you told me I represented 8,000 some of the students, so I've got 8,000 voices behind me, you know, yeah. um, regardless whether my opinion is right or wrong, if it's my opinion, you know, and I got 8,000 voices, that's why it's also, like I said, very stressful because, yeah. you know, you don't want to talk to administrators or something like that and say, hey, students are feeling this way, and the next thing you need, you know, they, you know, they go out and take their own straw poll vote and mm. they're like, oh, hey, students are feeling this other way, what, you know, where are you getting your information from, right? So, Interesting. it's difficult. Do you think the, uh, the student senate structure will help alleviate some of that? You have more feet on the ground, you'll be able to get a more concise and definite student opinion? Oh yeah, because yeah, it, because one of the responsibilities is gonna be surveying. I mean, every month they're gonna be surveying students, right? Mm -hmm. So, in every issue that's gonna come up on campus, for example, like the smoking policy issue, um, they're gonna go out and survey students within their college and say, hey, what do you feel about smoking policy, right? And they're gonna give them, you know, options. And they can say option A is, you know, smoke-free campus. Option B, uh, not a smoke-free campus. And option C could be not a smoke-free campus, but moving smoking areas farther away or in different places, things like that, right? So students have options. Or they can have a free response section. You know, they can write in and say, well, you know, I like, you know, I like the smoking on campus, mm -hmm. but yes, I do understand that the one by Patio Cafe needs to be removed and moved to the other side of the building or something like that, right? Or a little bit farther away or whatever it may be, right? So yeah, definitely they're be able to really get students involved. Okay. Kind of like the uh, the polling that they did for um, campus carry when that was a really big issue. Yeah. Yeah. Because that they were sending out polls like what every three or four weeks, and there was a there was a like a meeting in the the garden room showing you like here's what we've settled on, here's what we're going to do, here's what you need to be aware of. Like every four weeks, like clockwork, they were informing just new groups of people. So. And like you know, and the other thing is too, and I'll be completely honest with you guys, but like the blast email about the EC application, mm -hmm. um, honestly, we were, well, I mean, we never even knew that we had the capability of emailing all students. Okay. And, and that's just, I mean, that's just the fact that everybody, I mean, offices on campus because they're so restricted. Yeah. You know, and, and that's because for us, I mean, I coming in, I figured that we would have the ability to email all right. students being student of government. Right. Um, but you know, I, I mean, I guess we didn't really, you know, ask the question, you know, directly ask the question, can we email all students? And even when I did ask the question, um, it was, uh, I was like, well, I, I believe so. Maybe, you know, you'll have to look in your, you know, and they, yeah, you know, because when you get an email, you can, there's like different groups. You know? Yeah. And so I was looking through it and I've never emailed all students before. And so I just kind of guessed that it was this group because it had around, and, and it, the email was sent out to like over 21,000 people. So I was like, okay, well, that's a lot more than students that we have on campus right now. Like, but I'm hoping it says this because it says UHCL students. You right. know, so I'm hoping that this is going to go up to all students. Um, mm -hmm. But we can definitely do something like that in the future now that we know that we have that capability of saying, hey, if you guys want to have a poll or something like that, email them out. You know, email out this poll for Survey Monkey or something like that yeah. where students can take a survey um, because that's what they did for uh, our strategic plan. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I believe the amount of responses they got back was, you know, they got 1,500, maybe 2,000 responses or something from students. So, which I mean, is good data. Yeah, which is good. I mean, that's that's a lot. That's a lot of students replying to those things. So It's better voter turnout than our elections on a national scale. So, <laughs> there you go. That's right. So, you know, we'll definitely be utilizing that a lot more blast emails. I mean, from the blast emails, did we get anything back from it? No. You know, but I'm, I'm, I'm sure there's a lot of students who opened it and kind of read through it and kind of mm -hmm. was like, oh, okay, well, this is interesting. I'm glad, you know, that I was informed about this. But, we have student government. Right? <laughs> but, but it goes back it's to like my... I have a student email. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I had to write a, a report recently about how to check your student email. I, I saw that. Yeah. I saw that. Yeah. Um, it was uh, fun. But, you know, this whole idea, though, goes back to, you know, what I was talking about earlier is like, I guess, you know, the ECs really haven't hasn't had the need to email all students because they've never had the right to vote. You know, all they need to do is talk to the students within the meeting because they're the only ones that are voting and making the decisions. So they don't really need to email students out, right? So that was just a big, you know, just gray area that nobody ever pursued to think about. 
So, so right now, all students can go and vote in meetings, or no? Am I so right, that? Yeah, so right now, students can go and vote on everything besides fund requests made by organizations mm -hmm. and amendments. Okay. And amendments and fund requests are still held with the uh, representatives, the student org representatives. Right. Now, anything, any other vote we have, any like referendum or, you know, uh, fee proposals, all students are encouraged to come out and vote for those. Hmm. Um, any committees that we have, and we have committee straw poll votes, yeah, every student has can, can vote in those. And where would a student go to find out like the schedule for those things? So like say, for example, there's a straw poll taking students' opinions on you know, the big topic, smoking. Where, I, I'm your average Joe student, I come to school three days a week, and I'm, you know, I got classes here and there. How would I know that there's a straw poll going on? Right, so typically straw polls happen in our meetings. Mm -hmm. um, and so, you know, every Tuesday we have a meeting, so we're just about advertising, you know, to students that do have a meeting every Tuesday morning right. um, at 11.30. Okay. You know, other than that, I mean, we're very rare we're gonna have a straw poll vote outside of a meeting. Yeah. Um, or something like that, but we definitely wanna start to, like I said, this next upcoming EC, since they have a lot that they can advertise, yeah. we definitely want them out there having open forums and things like that. So. Okay, but for a current, a current student, like, is there a way to find out, like, what if there's going to be a straw poll in the next meeting like what's going to be discussed yes and no okay. and the, the way for them to find out because i'll be honest with you guys i don't since I, some of these other meetings like the other uh, shared governance committee meetings mm -hmm. i don't attend those so we have a student rep that attends those okay uh, and those meetings happen once a month or if they need to then they happen multiple times a month right so once a month, they go and meet, and they talk about a couple of things, and then that's when it happens. Now, what the agenda is for those meetings, I don't know about until the rep goes, or you know, I look in the, I'm, we get an email with SGA, and it says here's the agenda, and I'll be able to know hmm. what's on the agenda, or the issues that they're gonna be talking about, but I won't necessarily know to what extent. Okay. Right? So I'm really up in the air, like everybody else, when, until they so, go back to the meeting and report back to us and say, hey, here's what we yeah. talked about. You know, for example, Victoria came back and said, oh, we're talking about the smoking policy. And then she's said uh, the meeting prior to the meeting that we took the pro uh, straw poll vote that the next meeting we're going to take the vote and we want students to come out and take the vote okay. or, you know, at least have a vote. Yeah. Um, you huh. know, and, it, and like I said, no matter what, it's really difficult. I mean, I tell you what, there's a lot of students who, who pass by during that time mm -hmm. who say, hey, you guys want to come in for an SGA meeting? And they come over and like, oh, what's that about? You know, it's like, well, student government, I don't know. You know, it's like, yeah, because, yeah. you know, well, it makes it sound boring, right? It does. <laughs> if you're like, it's student mafia, right? right? <laughs> right? But I mean, you know, but like, I guess students, you know, if you think about student government, a lot of students think of like your average student government, which we'll be talking about business, you know, issues yeah. on campus and fundraising, politics stuff. Yeah. Fundraising, things like that. So they don't really think about, oh, SJ, our SJ, which is basically just advertising for everybody else. Yeah. Right. Just, I'm going to go up and make announcements about upcoming events. So. Yeah. Okay. Hmm. Well, definitely, I can see why there's uh, the need to, to stage the Senate over time because there's a lot of things that need to be changed. Because, I mean, if you're inviting students to come in for a straw poll and they have no idea that a straw poll is taking place because your average student might not be able to make it to the last meeting. Mm -hmm and you don't even know what took place or what's going to take place until after that meeting happens. That's, I mean, that's kind of, well, backwards government there, right there, you know? It's, yeah, that's right. No, yeah, yeah, you're absolutely right. And so, and, and with the introduction of the Senate structure, I mean, we won't have straw poll votes because we're gonna have those students going out there and surveying. Exactly. So we're gonna say, hey, you know, we're gonna take a smoking policy to the vote and you know, even if it comes down from the committee and the committee only wants, here's your two options, either keep it on campus or not keep it on campus, what's your, you know, what, what do you choose, right? Yeah. And so we'll be able to do that and instead of having just one focused area in time for students to come out and cast a vote. Now here's a question. Are you going to still be involved in SGA in the future? Um, yes, as much as I can. Good. And well, I'm being biased here. Good. There's, <laughs> you know, and, and it's it's. I graduate in the fall. Right. And over the summer I have an internship, and then I plan on getting into a full time job before this fall semester starts. So I'll definitely be a busy person, just you know, with um, 
focusing on my actual career. Mm -hmm. um, but I'll definitely be in, involved as much as I can with communicating with the next EC. Um, you know, and I've had a lot of people come up to me and talk to me about, um, you know, am I personally recruiting people to be in the next EC? Um, answer is absolutely. I mean, I'm trying my best here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because let me tell you what, here's the thing is because the last, and like I was telling you guys earlier, the last thing I want is for the next person or the next CC to come in here and push an agenda that's completely opposite of ours, mm -hmm. right? Because we've made so much progress and, and like you're talking about, there's so much potential there, you know, and, and in the future potential, especially with additional buildings that are going to come on campus, a lot more issues are going to come up. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're going to need a structure like this and it's now's the time to do it because since it's going to be put in place next year, next summer, and that's going to be literally right before the new buildings open up. So it's going to be very crucial. This is a very crucial time for that to happen. Um, but yeah, I'll definitely be involved as much as I can. Um, you know, if, if I was here until next spring, I probably would have run again. Um, but, you know, like I said, I can't run half some or half terms. So yeah. didn't apply. But yeah, I'll definitely be involved. And people can always, you know, I mean, I don't think I'll get, be giving out my email address but, <laughs> or my phone number to, to everybody, but I'll yeah. definitely be, you know, be, you know, indirectly be able to contact me if, you know, really need me. You can ask people and they'll be able to put you in touch with me. Yeah, you're pretty easy to spot, so. <laughs> sure. Yeah. So are we going to be voting on the new executive council soon or? Yes. So as of right now, we do have an amendment on the floor mm -hmm. that will uh, be voted on, on April 11th. And basically that amendment restricts uh, the qualifications of a student who wants to be in a position in, a, in an easy position mm. so the previous way or the previous or how it is now I shouldn't say previous because I haven't voted on but how it is now is that if you want to run for the EC you have to have a GPA above a 3.0 you have to be committed to a student organization you have to represent that student organization um, and then some other things, okay, and, and, and I really say some other things, and basically it's just applications, so like your involvement on campus or things like that, some other, you know, external involvement that you feel like is appropriate that you should put on the application. But mainly, those are the two big ones. It's GPA requirement and you have to be directly representing a student organization. Our amendment takes away those two things and says you don't, well one, we strongly believe that if you're in that position, you shouldn't represent anybody because you represent the student, the entire student body. Right. So you shouldn't represent your own student organization. That's just a little, you know, conflict of interest there. Mm -hmm. Two, we take away the 3.0 requirement. We say, we understand that GPA is still a very big, you know, concern mm -hmm. and that you should be academically a good student. So we're saying you just have to be in good standing within your college or within with the university. So basically all that means is for an undergrad it's a 2.5 and higher and for a graduate it's a 3.0 and higher, right? So it, basically, you know, yeah. um, you're looking at just, you know, if you're if you're an average student like B average or, you know, um, you're going to be able to run because I, I honestly I feel that I mean, like I said, I, grades are crucial. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I can tell you right now, I mean, I'm above a 3.0 mainly because of grad school I have to remain above a 3.0. Yeah. yeah. But, you know, <laughs> Uh, for the most part, you know, my undergrad days, I mean, I was, you know, fairly B's, you know, a lot of B's. And, you know, I, I think anybody can come in with a great, great ideas and a great skill set and be able to come in and really make a difference, right? Mm -hmm. Regardless of what grades you're making. And, and even to that point, it's like, okay, if you're making all straight A's, well, you know, my thought is, is, well, I think all straight A's is going to be a little bit different if, if you know, and don't chew down on this, but... <laughs> You know, if, if you're an engineering major to an art major, yeah, right? Yeah. So, I mean, it, it, you know, if you're saying I'm a 4.0 student, but I'm an art major, and then you have this, you know, 2.5 student who's an engineering major, mm -hmm. I mean, come on, you, there's a little bit, there's really no overlap there. Yeah. So, we Not just to mention, to, if you're a 4.0 student and you have time for SGA, and according to the old rules, and you're in a student org, and like, you're not human and I don't trust you. <laughs> right. You're clearly a robot and you want to destroy me. Right. So Well, and that's the other yeah. that's the other idea too, is that, you know, if you have all these qualifications, then you're essentially, you know, already disconnecting this the E C from yeah. the students because you're not an average student. You want an average student to represent students, right? Yeah. And so when you go, you know, for uh, students who are out you know, really involved, dedicated student organizations, all of this, it's completely true. Because let me tell you why, when I campaign, you know, and the same reason why I get some flack nowadays 
for wearing shorts and not slacks or not wearing a suit every day. Uh, you know, as I tell them, I'm just a student, right? Like that's that's who I am. That's who I represent. I mean, but th that's who I want to be categorized as, as as a student, right? Because I'm just average. You know, I'm, other than that, I'm just you know there to relay the message, right? I'm the messenger guy. And uh, but yeah, I definitely that's that's the point that I always hit home with administrators is at the end of the day. It's like, yeah, I'm here talking to you about student government, but just so you know, I'm a student, first yeah. and foremost, right? I'm here to be comfortable. I'm here to be casual, right? I'm not here to be uncomfortable and, you know, stress about things like, you know, wearing a suit every day. That's you go to classes. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> you, exactly. you, you have homework. <laughs> but, I mean, you have students who really want to do that. And if yeah. they want to wear a suit every day, that's perfectly fine. But guess what? You know, whenever I wear a suit and the student sees me, they don't see another student. They see, oh, wow, I think that guy's either a professor, he works here, or he's an administrator. Yeah. Right? And that's automatically putting a barrier between you and students. So I just, I just do away with that stuff. I don't know any students that wear suits every day. Yeah, I'm pretty sure there's some though. I think there's yeah, a few, sure but I mean, there's a few, yeah. Yeah. nothing wrong with looking nice. <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't right in the barn, like. Like my dress shoes. <laughs> Everybody except AJ and Jeremy are wearing like a black T-shirt and jeans currently. That's true. Just yeah. FYI. <laughs> <laughs> Jeremy's so. Playing, playing <laughs> So, yeah. anyways, Good job, guys. <laughs> so I do apologize for the earlier technical difficulties, but we did manage to get at least 20 minutes of some great stuff, so that's good. Uh, just to kind of recap all the parts that we kind of did miss that was not recorded, uh, we went over the EC election deadline was extended to April 12th. April 12th. Uh, all students can apply uh, at the moment, I think uh, April 18th. You said they're going to have the amendment vote to see if April 11th will April be the 11th amendment vote. Okay. Will be the vote. Um, and then it's going to move forward to the online voting, which all students can do, uh, which will take place April. It'll happen uh, that following week. So we get applications on the 12th. And mm -hmm. so that following Tuesday is when uh, Monday, Monday or Tuesday is when we'll open up mm -hmm. the, uh, the okay. poll. And we'll get a they should get a blast email out. I'll send out a blast email to all students. So check, check <laughs> your <laughs> student account. Definitely gonna make sure you do the last email. Check your hockey email. <laughs> but and definitely check your emails, guys, because there's a lot of really important information that gets sent to the emails. And if you don't know how to log your log into your UHCL email, definitely look on the website and figure out how to do that. And right, I'll read Trey's article, which is called uh, Check, your hawking, Check Your Hawking Email. Yeah. Check your, you know what I'm out. saying when I say that. <laughs> <laughs> I, they told me I couldn't swear on the podcast. Yeah, we censored him. <laughs> he does uh, curse a little too much. I have a bit of a problem. <laughs> but I, mean, I definitely encourage students to apply. I mean, even if you think it's, you know, it is a lot. I'm not, you know, I'm not going to say it's not a lot, but there's four of you, right? So four of you and an advisor, and let me tell you what, the, our advisor is really a lot of help. I mean, a lot of help. If you're a good planner, I mean, do it. I mean, it's, I mean, I wasn't a good planner. I can say what, but I learned quickly, you know, how to be a very, very good planner. So, you know, coming in, I didn't think it was going to be that big of a time constraint, right? Because I mean, but I was also judging off what past ECs did, right? So, you know, they did like one event per semester, you know, they just basically did the same routine. Not much. Right. <laughs> so, so when we came yeah. in and we really, you know. Yeah, changed some things, y'all. Yeah, we, yeah. We, we had a lot, of, a lot on our plate this semester and that was, that was our fault, right? And we recognized that. But then again, you know, it's definitely needed. Way to go, guys. You turn a school into a democracy. <laughs> but, you know, so the next EC coming in, you know, their workload, um, will probably be a lot lighter because you know they're going to be pursuing some uh, you know a few things but definitely not to the extent that we had this year yeah. um and not only the fact the all the meetings that we've been to this year is was if you take a, a normal year basically a normal year of meetings and you double that because of everything that's going on this year i'm talking you know new president new buildings on campus i mean all those meetings to talk about what's going to go in these buildings and what the color scheme is going to be like right so all of that stuff is now over or is coming to an end, right? So the next EC will definitely not have as much of a time constraint that we did this year. Um, you know, and, and a lot of it's just students want to make sure that it lines up with their schedule, you know, their school schedule and their class schedule uh, makes sense. And, you know, my best answer to that is that's good. But if you can't, if you can't make the meetings, that's okay because you can still do a very great job 
Because if you have three other people, people or three other EC members that can make the meetings, it's completely fine. They can make your reports for you, things like that. Um, just because you, you physically can't be there because of some sort of time constraint, classes or something like that, people understand. And it's, it's not that big deal. As long as you can do your job and you do your job well, then it, it's no, not a big issue. So I encourage everybody to apply, but you know. Have you seen any students or people on campus and you're like, you, you would make a good replacement for me? <laughs> yes, <laughs> I have, and I've talked to a couple of students, and but it's once again, it's a whole time thing. You yeah. know, it's just, I don't have time for it, and and there's a lot of people who even said, hey, I definitely want to do this, but I can't really do it right now. I'll do it next year. Okay, you know, so I guess my now my goal or my my strategy has changed into now focusing on the students who have applied and saying, okay, you have applied you need to talk to your friends about applying. Because that's what I did, right? When I came in, and unfortunately we don't have, you know, uh, ticket voting, so, um, but that's pretty much what I did, right? And I, I formed my own little platform, or I formed my own platform and basically formed my own uh, uh, ticket and said, hey, look, if, if I'm running and if you wanna vote for me, vote for these three other people as well because I want these three other people to be on my EC with me because, you know, one, we're, you know, coherent and we, you know, where we'll be able to relate easily and we're communi good communicators with each other and be able to work with each other. Unified movement. Exactly. Yeah. So, you know, that's that's a big thing because it's, let me tell you what, it's tough if you have somebody in there who just, I mean, completely clashes, so. It stonewalls it. And, okay. and I have, from the, the meetings that I saw last semester, there's a, it wasn't bad, but you could definitely tell that some, some stonewalling Oh yeah, occur. Oh yeah, it, 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 it occurred within our it occurred within our UC. Yeah. I mean, simply put, but the issue being was, it was the, the it was the communication issue within the EC members. So, you know, unfortunately, like I said, you can put so much on your team members, but you can't have them do all the work and then come in and then want to change all the work that they did together, right? So that's that's pretty much what happened last semester. Is you know. Uh, an EC member just wasn't there consistently and couldn't be there and you know in turn when they were there they didn't understand where we what we were doing and where we were at and why we were there and things like that so uh, you know so that was that's a very big issue but um, you know that's why I said you really got to make sure you know timing yes is a big big deal but like I said team player if you're, you're you have a team behind you and if your team understands that, like I said, we understand that if you can't make a meeting, we understand that, we'll catch you up. Mm -hmm. But if you completely go, you know, just, if you isolate yourself and you don't come out and communicate with anybody, then, you know, of course there's gonna be issues there. Yeah. So, um, and then definitely after we went to the conference last semester, uh, and they, the rest, you know, my vision really came, you know, to the forefront of their mind because, or forefront of their eyes because they were saying, oh wow, you know, now they were able to really visualize what I was envisioning for SGA and say, oh wow, yeah, you're absolutely right. Like, we went there and we're the only four person, four, four team SGA without a Senate, you know, without, you know, most of these people have all three branches of government, right? So they have like a, a judicial, executive, and legislative branch, right? We don't even have that, okay? So I'm just saying, we, we just want to introduce a Senate structure. I think that would be great. Mm -hmm. But, what would a judicial branch do? So a judicial branch is uh, sounds intense. They basically review all policies, make sure that you know any constitutional amendments that want to come doesn't you know uh, affect any other part of the constitution or doesn't you know it, uh, basically doesn't you know step on anybody's toes. They also look at student conduct issues and they look at student conduct issues within the different branches of government, make sure that students are upholding you know. Um, good values and being good stewards of the university um, and things like that and most of those the judicial branch those people are appointed and or those students are appointed and they serve until they graduate um, so it kind of sucks I mean it's kind of good <laughs> it's kind of good if you're the president that appoints the judicial branch but if yeah. you're not of course I believe it's the same process so the president appoints and then the legislative branch approves them all yeah. you know make sure that yeah uh, but if you're, you know, if you're like the next president that you don't guys don't really see eye to it's gonna be tough. But yeah, so that's pretty much what they do, just review policies and stuff so like that. Maybe that's something that the future SGAs will end up implementing at some point. Um, pause for a second. Do any of you have to go at four? I do. So you gotta go. 
Okay, it's Chris, uh, AJ gotta go. Yeah, thank I you, AJ, it. for being here, Student yeah. Government Association President. Thank you guys. Crystal, thank you for being here. Yeah. You have been a great supporter <laughs> of our podcast. <laughs> congratulations to the Crystal because she won for uh, yes. second place. Yeah, Best you award. Data. These are data. Yeah, you award winning Denver, journalists. From the Texas you, Intercollegiate you, Press Association. So you thank you guys for being here. Champion. Thank you. Jeremy, do you got to go? No, Okay, Jeremy's saying. I do saying, have to go. Trey's got to go. All I right. Go. Trey's got to go. I got to go. I can, I can say one thing, though. Uh, Jeremy, what do sport? What do sports? What? Do sport? <laughs> what how do ball? You put ball in hoop and then you throw ball, catch ball, and you run around. That's hoop ball. Uh, we'll talk about that, and I'll and you can read, watch the pod, or read, listen to the podcast, and you can learn. Oh, I listen to every episode. These things. Yeah. So. I I listen to every episode of our podcast that we record. I sense the sarcasm. What? Which is kind of sad. Come on. It's kind of depressing. Hey, I'm looking at this down here. Wasn't it your idea? Yeah. Thank you, Jeremy. <laughs> Thank you, Jeremy, for pointing that yeah, right that was, back down. It was my idea. Uh, I'm, I'm the reason that we're even doing this. And I made sure to have you host, which you is even did. better. Because you have a wonderful voice for hosting. And I... I'm great with technical things. You are. We You're missed. so good at it. Let me just recap you guys who are listening. Uh, <laughs> we started at like 3 o'clock, and it's already 4 o'clock now. So we talked for an hour, but about 30 minutes was only recorded yeah. <laughs> because of some it's technical difficulties. But, hey, we're here. And no, Trey is uh, going to... He's backing up his stuff because he brings. Well, I think we, we caught up the, the politics pretty yeah, easily. I think we, we, we cut up. And he was it. great. He was great about answering the questions that we had. And he was honest. Uh, and yes. you know what? He said exactly the questions that I was hoping he was going to answer, and he didn't avoid it. That's great. So, yeah. All right. It's a slow exit for me, by the way, guys. It yeah. sounds like I'm just sitting peacefully. Yeah, I'm not. Uh, I'm actually he like. He has yeah, a lot of here. Slowly getting my things together. No, no, no sports. Start the conversation with yeah. so, on Well, let's we'll go ahead and just, I guess, kind of just start back up because now there are four of us. So, this is the real signal sound bites. Oh. Just kidding. <laughs> I'm still in the room. <laughs> That's <laughs> okay. uh, so, of course, I'm Brandon Taylor, managing editor of the signal. We got Leaf, we got Jeremy, we got Lindsay. And Jeremy, you are new, so we missed your fact the first time. Why don't you go ahead and restate it again? Well, let me shut this door. My fun facts. Yeah. Um, I just said that I've traveled a lot across the United States with my family, so pretty well traveled person. He's yeah, very well traveled. I like to think of myself as one. <laughs> <laughs> so something that Trey brought up is obviously sports. Jeremy is really great at sports and knows a lot about sports, and he covers our sports talk blog. So Jeremy, recap us. What is going on with uh, March Madness and and all kinds of stuff that's sports related? Oh, it's pure madness. Um, <laughs> so I did the UHCL March Madness Bracket Challenge, and um, right now I'm actually doing pretty good. I, start, I started off pretty bad, but my team that I picked to win it all is still in the championship game. Nice. So I think if I get that pick right, then I think I'll win the whole thing, the challenge. Nice. So I'm hoping I get some kind of prize or something. <laughs> that would be nice. That would be really um, cool. Maybe. So you're thinking you might win the whole UHCL bracket? Yeah. Wow, cool. Because oh. I'm the only one that picked Gonzaga to win it all, and they're still in it. Oh, nice. Very nice. So. Maybe you'll win a basketball. Do you know how many people are in yeah, the bracket? Yeah, it's like 38. Wow. 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 That's pretty cool. Yeah. Where is your standing like right now? Uh, right now I'm ninth. And if nice. I get this championship pick right, I think I'll move up to first. Wow. Yeah, that's impressive. I don't know how any of this works. <laughs> you don't know how this goal works? <laughs> no. Basically, there's What's two the, teams. Uh, there's the well, ball no, and the ball. Well, no, I know how to play basketball. And then they shoot in the... What is, the, what is March Madness? <laughs> March Madness? What is this bracket like, stuff? Are you... What, yeah, what's like, going on? This is the National College Basketball Tournament. So there's 64 teams, and it's all single elimination. So, like, you play, like, the best team plays the worst team, and the second best plays the second best. It's like that. And so it's just... Any team can lose in any game, so you never know. And then what's it knocks them out yeah, immediately. It knocks them out immediately. So every day, everything they've done the whole season all comes down to one game. And so, what is this bracket you've made? What is oh, this it? bracket? Is just my prediction of each game. Okay. So like, if one team wins, they move on to the next round. So I just predict each round, and um, yeah, that's pretty much it. And so, whoever predicts most accurately. Yeah, most wins. accurately. Yeah, exactly. Interesting. Okay, well, I, what, now what, I understand. Now you're caught up on yeah. my friends. <laughs> 
And I think also today something's going on with the Astros, right? The yeah, first game of the season is today. First game of the season. Astros. And by the way, we're recording this on Monday, April 3rd. This will come out on Friday. So that's why we're talking like it's happening tonight. But you're going to be listening to this and it's going to happen right now. So we'll know the score and we'll probably update it and most likely update it in the post that we do. But uh, so yeah, sports. This is a thing that people do. Uh, I'm not great at sports. I I always sucked at sports. Uh, what about you guys? Or are I, was in gym, I was in gymnastics. You're in gymnastics. Wow. Yeah, I can do a back handspring. Oh really? I was I was able to do a standing backflip before I my gymnastics school closed down because nobody cares about gymnastics and it's very Did expensive. You do those things where you like swing from the things. No, <laughs> see, like halfway through they switched to tumbling only, so we lost oh, okay. the bars, we lost all the fun stuff. So, but we had giant trampolines. You could jump like twenty five feet in the air. It was, oh, it was wow, a lot that's of fun. fun. That's interesting. Yeah. I did tennis when I was younger nice. and a uh, fun fact you guys might not know about me in high school I was on the wrestling team whoa wow. yes. so you could probably kick her ass <laughs> collectively all at once <laughs> collectively <laughs> what about you Jeremy I'm pretty uh, sure yeah I played basketball tennis basketball and tennis in high school pretty competitively and I've uh, just been playing basketball tennis and baseball my whole life What's like your favorite sport? Probably basketball is my favorite. I still play that almost every day. Nice. It's a fun way to stay active and exercise. Yeah. Ex- exercise is great. And uh, so it's sports. And <laughs> we don't have a sports team here at UACL. Yeah, that's but we do yeah, have, we do have, we do have um, some. What, what options are there for students right now? Uh, we have they're table tennis. They're having like a three-on-three basketball league that they're actually they're, And tennis league too, I think. Nice. I think it starts next week. I signed up for the basketball league. Oh, you have to keep us updated on that for sure. Yeah. Uh, and also, we're getting the new rec center, so that should yeah. hopefully build up that some gym. Uh, sports team. We're going to have, uh, I think, three basketball courts and, or two basketball courts, and then have some place for soccer and a track and all kinds of cool stuff. So hopefully we'll maybe get a team one day. Go Hawks. <laughs> <laughs> this has actually been a, a more interesting conversation with uh, AJ and Trey, but because we ran over, you know, they had to yeah. leave. But, we had some technical difficulties. Yeah, so, but what was Trey's question he was going to ask? He had a, he had uh, what does Ball do? What, 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 what did he say? What is sports? No, no, no. What he, is sports? He had, he had a question in our, in our oh. meeting. I don't know. I'm trying. Uh, I don't have a note here for it. I'm, I'm sure it was something sarcastic and not <laughs> anywhere near relevant. <laughs> so, moving on from sports. <laughs> well, no, 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 hold on. Hold oh, on, you want to say on sports? Okay. Let's, let's get a little meatier here. Okay. Kaepernick. Oh, yeah. Kaepernick didn't get picked, right? Yeah. From what I understand. He's, a lot, yeah. he's, a, he's a not on a team right are, now. Yeah, a lot of owners are really um, apprehensive about him. They think he just brings too much trouble with him because of his whole... Kneeling during the national anthem thing. And I think that's ridiculous because you have uh, people in the NFL who, you know, have been convicted of rape and other things, and that's just absolutely ridiculous. He's done no physical harm to anybody, Mm -hmm. and he's protesting in a nonviolent way. And, I mean, it's just sad that, you know, that... That is too much controversy yeah, over. Mm-hmm. And a lot of veterans have come out and say that they they fought to protect his right to protest. Yeah, exactly. And they think that what he's doing is okay. And you have the guy who was fighting dogs, and he's still yeah, he's Michael still in the, Vick. Yeah, yeah, Michael Vick. Yeah. Um, but but Kaepernick is a good football player. Like, forget forget his political stance and what he does yeah. on the field in terms of politics. What he does on the field in terms of the game. He's a good player. That's yeah, that's he's why good enough to be in the NFL. Yeah, he should be on a team. Yeah, this is football, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, I well, I just started yeah. reading about Kaepernick's story, and I didn't I didn't realize he was. I guess someone got injured. He got put into a game, and then he took his team to the Super Bowl. Oh. Uh-huh. Yeah, in his rookie year. Yeah. yeah, and so he's he's not he's not just some guy who yeah, throws the ball. He's a good player. He's definitely been a good player. Yeah. So it's I think it's a kind of a tragedy. Yeah, they're losing a good guy. He's being blackballed by the NFL. Oh, wow. Because of his political stance. And I also read he had a 4.0 GPA or 3.0 GPA, something like that. He's, he's like a really smart guy. He's not just a, a dumb jock, you know. He's, he's an intelligent, well-read person. So. 
Anyways, Colin Kaepernick. But it's a hot button issue. How about the Texans? What's going on with the Texans? Anybody have any? Um, they're still looking for a quarterback. They don't have one. I, I've read about this on Facebook. Yeah. Somewhere. Man, <laughs> Manzi, Manziel, Manziel. Manziel. He was our old quarterback. No, he no, was, uh, no. He's on our team. No, he was a Texas A&M quarterback. All right, my bad. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was, he was the... I think I he know, was, right? like, considered, right? He was like, yeah, the Texans were thinking about drafting him, but he's out of the NFL now. He had too many, like, drinking problems. Yeah, that's what I was going to okay. say. He I've just seen the stop, name. It just... He couldn't stop partying and doing drugs. Yeah. How about J.J. Watt? What's going on with J.J. Watt? He was out, I think, most of the season, yeah, right? Yeah, he had Less... back surgery. He's hoping to be back this year. He said he feels really good, so... No offense, I like J.J. Watt, but I'm kind of glad because he hasn't been on my TV as much. Because he's <laughs> everywhere. He's big. Yeah, he's, he's a big guy. He's, he's younger than me. That blows I, my mind. How old are you? I'm 28. I'm yeah, he's 26, 27. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. So I have some life decisions I need to look at <laughs> because he's in Ford commercials, and I'm sitting here on the Signal Soundbites podcast. Just become really good at football. <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> Learn some steroids. Y'all know where getting steroids get no, I'm not. I'm not accusing JJ uh, Watt of doing anything like that. <laughs> <laughs> you sure? He's <laughs> a big guy. How's it not that big? <laughs> I read that he eats like thousands upon thousands of calories and just yeah. a meal he just a like day. eats a, like a dozen that eggs for like breakfast. That's, him. That's the sound of him sucking the eggs out of their <laughs> shell. <laughs> I know, I realized I'm there's glad a video you to go along with this. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah that, was, that was interesting. <laughs> so, so yeah, about that sport ball stuff, things. Astros opening day, aren't they supposed to be really good this season? They're go all the way? Yeah, they were World supposed series? to be last year too, but they didn't. So we'll see, yeah. actually. Trey seemed to have, like, his doubts about the Astros, but you seem to be optimistic about them. Yeah. Why is that? I think they're just better than last year. They had some good pieces, so I think they'll get better. Nice. Hopefully. Hopefully. On that note, guys, if you want to hear more, well, read more sports talk by Jeremy, who is a really good about talking about sports <laughs> as opposed to the rest of us you can go on uhclsignal.com and look under the sports talk blog tab and you can read all his awesome stuff about sports and that things <laughs> <laughs> so moving on really quickly let's talk about uh movie reboots and currently I, I think even this year there's like so many there's like the power rangers there's Beauty and the Beast, there's going to be the upcoming Spider-Man movie, there's all these reboots. Why? And are they good? And should they keep doing them? And what are your thoughts on these? Well, I mean, it's it's easier to, you know, kind of resell an idea that's already guaranteed to work and, mm -hmm. you know, just market it towards a different, you know, age crowd. And everybody likes to reminisce about old movies and old favorites and even if you hear that a remake is bad you still want to see it because you liked the original or at least in my opinion mm -hmm. I think Beauty and the Beast is interesting because we haven't seen it with real people before Yeah, so I think that's an interesting take at least it's something new that, that seems to be what's going on with with what with, the, with these reboots is mm -hmm. they're, they're not doing the same thing over again they're, yeah, well no, I guess with it they kind of are trying to mimic it a lot in a lot of ways yeah. but but like what they're they're finding a new angle for for these movies, mm -hmm. like um, one that people may not know about as much as Death Note. It's from an anime. They made a live action Japanese version of it. Now they're making it based in Seattle, no longer in Tokyo, um, and it's going to be American actors in English, and you know it's it's a completely different take on the story. And people are upset on it about it because they're saying it's whitewashing it. You know they're. They're they're casting all these characters as white people, but the one of the one of the lead characters is going to be an African American, and it's you can't really base it in America and then still have all you know Japanese characters. It, it's exactly it's in a it would new be, place. It's a new story. It would be whitewashing if they had all American characters, but it still took place yeah. in mm -hmm. that. But that Japan is not to say setting. that yeah. whitewashing doesn't occur in these movies. Exactly. And that's not a problem. But I think with with this one specifically, I'm excited to see what they do. Yeah. yeah, and and that's what uh, when I was doing some research, it came up that uh, a lot of 
you know, Japanese horror films are remade into, or, you know, reimagined uh, into American horror films. Yeah. And, uh, you know, like The Grudge and, or, or The Ring uh, kind of really Ring. sparked a big one and kind of opened the door for a lot of Japanese horror film remakes. And there was another one, um, my personal favorite movie right now, Snowpiercer. Uh, oh, with Chris Evans? Yeah, yeah that was it's an amazing movie. movie. You should all watch it, but it's totally uh, Japanese, or no, uh, Korean, Korean manga. Yeah. But Snowpiercer is awesome. Well, here is uh, a movie that I found out that was a remake and I thought was really funny was uh, Mr. Deeds. Mr. Oh, Deeds. Wow. Yes, it's a remake of the 1936 film Mr. Deeds Goes to Town. And while I haven't seen the 1936 movie, I read about the plot. And they do, it is, it seems pretty similar. Um, of course, the Adam Sandler version is going to have more comedy and stuff. Mm -hmm. But uh, one of the things I thought was interesting is how they, in the original film, Longfellow Deeds, which is played by Adam Sandler in the new version, um, in the old version, he's a greeting card poet. And to kind of like make it funny and relevant in the new one, you know. Uh, Adam Sandler opens his, uh, what is it, the... Door. No, the... Window. At Garage. The end, <laughs> he opens Cabinet. the... You're messing me up. <laughs> I thought this was, like, Pictionary or something. Like, no, he, he opens uh, the greeting card business, but they're all really bad and funny. Remember that part of it? I never saw either of those movies. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm, after Happy Gilmore, he just you know. Yeah. yeah. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> so do you think that maybe this is kind of a a problem in a sense that you're there's no original thought anymore? It's kind of just like rebuilding off of something that's already done. That's why I hate um, what's his face, Tim Burton. You know, it, it's it's none of it's none of it's new. He, they, like the the original thing he did was Nightmare Before Christmas, and then and then what? It's I I hate his Willy Wonka rendition. I he made like a dark it. version of Batman, like an emo version of Batman. Or See, oh yeah, he did, and that I mean, and that's the bad Batman, the yeah. the the ones that everybody looks at and they're like, these are terrible. Yeah. You know, the Dark Knight was amazing. Yeah, so uh, I I don't know. And Tim Burton. I hate Tim Burton. That's the is That's actually movie. gonna. <laughs> no ideas. He's actually set to remake Dumbo. Oh jeez. Wow. Okay. Remake, remake that I'm excited about. Is it a remake? It's more of a sequel. Blade Runner. Oh my god. I'm excited. That's it. That's all oh. I have. Blade Runner. <laughs> it's gonna be amazing. Who's gonna play Harrison Ford's part? Um. Is he still gonna be blonde in? Blonde guy. Brian. Not Brian Reynolds. He's maybe in the notebook. What's that guy? Ryan, Ryan Gosling. Gosling. Ryan Gosling? No, maybe. I'll look this up. Got Ryan Gosling and Ryan Reynolds mixed up. It's They're funny. blonde guys. None of us are blonde. Because everybody. Sorry if you're blonde. You know, you all look the same to me. I can't tell you apart. <laughs> <laughs> That's not stereotyping. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. Yeah. I still like you guys anyways. That's, that's good. So this is from 2011, and I couldn't find anything more recently, but I would not be surprised if this went up. But in 2011, only 43% of wide release films were based on original ideas, Jeez. meaning wow. that 57% of films released in 2011 were, you know, a that's remake, crazy. reboot, reimagining. And I would not be surprised if it was even more today. That's crazy. And I mean, do, do y'all go watch movies at the theater? Um, yeah. not really. I mean, as I try to as often as I can, but it really has to be like a, a really great movie that's like really piques my interest. Otherwise, it's kind and of. And what, what was? I mean, what movies do y'all go see? I just recently saw Power Rangers, which is a, a reboot. The last one I saw was Rogue One. Rogue One, which is, I mean, I guess you could consider that kind of a reboot. It's, yeah, in the Star yeah. Wars. Yeah. yeah. The last one I saw was Get Out. That was a really good movie. But that was not a reboot. Yeah, that was an original, yeah. What was the last reboot you saw? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, I'd have to think back. Yeah. I can't even remember the last time I went to the movie theater. I'd, I'd probably see maybe 
four movies a year in the theater. Yeah. Well, I know right now in the industry they're negotiating um, basically the, the movie theaters or the, the, the production companies want to do like simultaneous releases where they're releasing them to video on demand at the same time where you can watch it at your house. And I was thinking about it. Everybody has like a giant TV these days. I mean, the, the time whenever you needed a movie theaters, when that was a thing, when they became like a facet of American society was was whenever nobody had a TV. Yeah. You couldn't, you didn't have this big giant screen. You couldn't, yeah. there was no access to the movies. You couldn't play it. It was, it was a technological barrier and now it's, it's gone. You can watch That's, any movie anytime and it looks amazing on your giant 4K TV. So yeah. Like, is, I like is, is the, there a re- do we need theaters anymore? I don't, I mean, they're nice. I like the experience of going to a movie theater, but at the same time, I catch myself not watching movies I really want to see because I get busy. I don't have time to go to a theater. Yeah. I would rather just chill at home, put on my TV, and watch it the night it's released. So, like, someone eating if a pickle next to you. Well, that's what I hate pickles. Mean. <laughs> Speaking of that, I went and saw a movie at Star Cinema Grill, and the guy next to me was just trying, like, anytime there was, you know, like a funny part in the theater laughed, he would look over at me for, like, like yeah, you thought that was funny too, or like, or like he asked me, you know, what beer I was drinking, if I liked it. I'm like, who are, are you? <laughs> like, I don't even want the person I know that I'm with yeah. talking to me during the movie. Just, Why would you yeah. talk to me during the movie? <laughs> Those type of people just live in movie theaters. Yeah. There's people like that that are just there all the time. Mm-hmm. And now a lot of movie theaters uh, are kind of designing it to kind of give you that more at home feel yeah. mm-hmm. with big couches and I think like some movie theaters even have beds. And Which is nice, but you still have to get dressed and you get still, ready to yeah. go. And yeah. it's like, and I do you just wear do your that. shoes in that bed? Can it's you wear weird. Your, or are you gonna take your shoes off? But I don't know. I think it's weird. <laughs> Everybody mean, in the theater clean? takes their shoes yeah. off. That's just That's weird. Gonna be sticky. <laughs> kind of unsanitary at the same time. I, I, th- I think, like, with the reboots, and the, I think it's, like, a, a symptom of a greater problem within the industry is, like, how do they get the people in the seats and should they even tr- be trying to put people in the seats? Mm-hmm. But you, you, have, you have the theaters controlling the distribution, when it happens and who gets to see it, when... when yeah. I, I think it, I, it's... At the end of the day, it's money, you know? Yeah. That's I why think- they're making these reboots. That's why they're... They're trying to force these movies to stay in the theaters and not be released early. See, I think if they were to just release it, like, say a movie's coming out Friday at midnight in the theaters, if you were to given the option to watch it at home, I think you would actually see more people watching the movie at that time yeah. than you do in the box office numbers. You know, like, I think it would actually increase the amount of sales because people lazy people have things to do <laughs> it would you know? increase the i i could see it increasing the movie sales mm-hmm. but then again you would just completely gut the theater industry because i'm mm-hmm. sure that you know releases and premieres are you know where they do make the big money yeah mm-hmm. well that's yeah yeah so i mean it's a it's a sticky issue it is well speaking of sticky issues I don't really have a great transition for that one, but uh, <laughs> I was trying to go somewhere, but it didn't go anywhere. So anyways, thank you for listening, guys. This has been Signal Soundbites, and we will be back in about two weeks with a new episode. Hopefully, no technical difficulties. I no, now know no, how to know. work this recorder now, so it should yeah. not be a problem at all. Thank you, Leaf. Leaf. <laughs> Lindsay. Lindsay. <laughs> Jeremy, I always want to call you Trey. I don't know why. Trey's gone. I messed up the floor. Yeah, that's good. Bye, everybody.